So psychedelics and psychosis, the latest science. Um, to start off, I kind of would ask you guys to think about what do you guys think of when you think of psychedelics and psychosis? Because obviously this has been kind of a topic that has been hidden in the background of psychedelic science, untalked about kind of for as long as it has existed, it seems. In general, there are sort of two flavors of comparisons that people make with psychedelics and psychosis. Namely, that the drug effects produced resemble the psych psychotic symptoms somewhat, or that psychedelics may cause psychosis. So you might think of like examples of like Brian Wilson, who was in the Beach Boys, supposedly he did acid, and then developed schizoaffective disorder, or Sid Barrett as well. So these are really two different sort of problems that we have to consider that need to be carefully broken down. Um, and I think when breaking them down, it's important to look at the history of how this connection between psychedelics and psychosis came about. So in 1952, Humphrey Osman developed sort of a novel theory of schizophrenia where supposedly it was a metabolic defect where endogenous psychedelics were building up. Um, in people's bodies, causing them to, you know, experience basically psychedelic-like symptoms all the time, if you will. So this was um, a radical idea at the time where psychoanalysis kind of dominated um, psychiatry. So he kind of was offering a more biomedical perspective, actually, in some sense. And the interesting thing about this is even though he was saying, you know, these drugs model psychosis, this wasn't something necessarily to be feared. Um, psychiatrists, uh, famous people like Alex Huxley would take um, drugs with the hopes of experiencing temporary psychosis. So even in the doors of perception, Huxley begins by saying, oh, I'm going to take a psychotoma memic. Isn't this going to be interesting? And it was just kind of thought of a, as a novelty. So you could undergo a temporary state of the psychosis and then walk away completely fine. But later on, in once you know psychedelics have leaked into the broader culture with that whole countercultural um, sort of movement, people needed to find a way to sort of demonize these drugs. And it was easy to go back to that psychotomimemic thing and use it as a way to say these drugs are dangerous. So, you know, instead of having a temporary experience of psychosis, you're going to be permanently psychotic. You're going to develop permanent mental derangement, even an article said. And I think it's important that we be sort of skeptical of these claims that were made at the time because it's clear that they were trying to build up sort of a fear-based narrative without necessarily a ton of evidence. So you can also see one of the sort of predominant ways that people discounted the effects of psychedelics was saying, oh, you're going to get chromosome damage. There's no evidence for that today. We don't talk about that yet. Still, for some reason, we hold on to this idea without, I would argue, a careful empirical examination um, that psychedelics somehow are causing people to develop schizophrenia or psychotic disorders. So I wanted to investigate this further. And one thing I will say briefly is that also it's interesting that people have sort of latched onto this developing schizophrenia or psychotic disorder as the most adverse outcome possible of psychedelics. Schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders are amongst the most stigmatized mental health conditions. So are we playing into the stigma that surrounds a serious issue that people are facing? I think we are, and I think that's really disturbing. And another thing to consider is that the symptoms of psychotic disorders aren't unique to psychotic disorders. You can have them in depression. You can have them in bipolar disorder. People with PTSD report hearing auditory hallucinations. There's nothing really special about schizophrenia per se where it 
warrants this stigma and this fear. And it's even not the most like deadly condition out there. Anorexia, bipolar disorder, those have higher rates of mortality. So it seems that there's a lot of sort of othering going on with this condition. So instead of, you know, just going around saying, we should exclude people, we should exclude people, I wanted to see what sort of evidence is there that people could be helped or harmed. So to start off, what I did was a cross-sectional survey study um, where people who used any sort of drug um, just answered various questions about their mental health, including psychotic symptoms. And we looked at whether people with a psychotic disorder, bipolar disorder, or a family history of either of those conditions reported more sort of psychotic symptoms if they had used psychedelics. Well, what we found was that in this cross-sectional study, lots of problems there, um, was that there was no interaction with any of the um, facets of psychotic symptoms that we measured with psychedelic use. So a person with a psychotic disorder exposed to a psychedelic was no more worse off than other psychedelic users um, in terms of magical ideation, self referential thinking in terms of like thinking things are specifically about you, um, negative symptoms, or auditory hallucinations. So that's saying, at least based off this, their symptoms don't seem to be worsening. People might be faking well. That's kind of what I thought at first upon getting these results. I was like, guess the questionnaires made it clear what the study was about. But then I looked at a bit more concrete sort of evidence within the study about mental health hospitalizations. So this is, are people getting hospitalized before? Are they getting hospitalized during? And are they getting hospitalized after in terms of odd ratios? Um, prior to the use of psychedelics, people with psychotic disorders are the most likely out of any mental health condition we looked at to get hospitalized. And then after, they are not the most likely to get hospitalized. The most likely uh, group of people to get hospitalized afterwards were people with what we, what was in the survey called other personality disorders. Unfortunately, that's vague, but those people seem to be the most likely to report increases in hospitalizations after psychedelic use. It's not saying those people shouldn't use it necessarily, but it's saying, you know, we need more caution. Intriguingly, people with psychotic disorders actually, it's a trend level, but they were less likely to be hospitalized during the acute effects. Not sure what this means. It might mean that maybe they had prior experiences being hospitalized and were just terrified to go in, even if they were having adverse reactions. I don't know, but it's intriguing nonetheless. Um, so this is cross-sectional, so obviously a lot of issues with it. But then I got a chance to collaborate on this longitudinal study that looked at people um, over two months, so at baseline measuring their psychotic symptoms, and then two months later, psychotic symptoms. And this sample was kind of cool because it was not psychedelic specific. It was people being recruited via Amazon MTurk. So not just people who are nerds about these drugs, which is a niche population. Um, so then we filtered out people who had used psychedelics at baseline um, and saw if their symptoms went up or not, their psychotic symptoms. Intriguingly, people with a personal history of psychotic disorders, their symptoms actually went down. With bipolar disorder, on the other hand, it went up. So what might be going on there? I'm not sure, but I think maybe these are cases of mania sort of with psychotic features. There's a lot of overlap there. And you think about how other serotonergic drugs, such as SSRIs, are known to cause something in people with bipolar disorder called affective switching, where they can you know, suddenly have a manic episode. So maybe that's what we're seeing with this increase in psychotic symptoms. I'm not sure. Interestingly, SSRIs are actually not contraindicated for people with schizophrenia spectrum conditions. So that's, I don't know, there's something there. So study I'm currently conducting, thank you Source Research Foundation, um, is a qualitative study that is interviewing people who have had a non-effective episode of psychosis, um, 
and have then used psychedelics. I didn't want to look at people who had had, um, who had used psychedelics and then supposedly developed psychosis because there might be, you know, an attempt to kind of say, oh, this clearly triggered my psychotic break because it's an a salient experience, even though, you know, perhaps they were using cannabis heavily and there's a variety of other factors at play. So that's why we chose to do after. Um, and there were two interviews per participant. The first focused on people explaining their experiences with psychosis and how that impacted their lives, both positively and negatively. Psychosis for some people can have positive outcomes actually. It can you know, promote post-traumatic growth in some instances. So I felt it was important to give people that opportunity as well. And then their experiences with psychedelics, positive and negative. And then the second interview focused on comparing those experiences. Are these truly, you know, psychotomimemic drugs in the eyes of people who have had actual psychosis? Um, so this is a subsample because we're still conducting the study and I haven't fully analyzed in depth all of the um, data. But you can see there, there are two people with sch schizophrenia, two with brief psychotic disorder, one person with um, unspecified, and everybody had use of antipsychotics. Three people were currently used antipsychotics, two had mental health hospitalizations, um, and two had family history. So this is a sample of people, I think, that really were affected with their psychotic disorders. But they were also major psychonauts. So, you know, take with that what you will, but they're doing every single drug imaginable. Not that that's a bad thing, but these are drug enthusiasts. So, you know, this might not apply to the broader population of people with psychotic disorders who use psychedelics. So what were their experiences like during? I was shocked by how typical they were. The same sort of experiences you would hear somebody just talking about, you know, with like a history of depression or anxiety or whatever, or just a normal person. Like, oh man, the visuals were so cool and, you know, my ego dissolved, all of that. I was like, what, what is the difference? Um, but they did also describe negative experiences. But again, broadly within the range of what I would consider normal. Um, so some logistic notes before we get into like the differences and what people reported. Uh, people did stop using their medication prior. It's not as if, you know, you can take something that's a um, 5-HT2A antagonist and then take a psychedelic and it'll work, no. Um, and some people did report using during their acute psychosis. This seemed to have lots of an impact on them, interestingly. Um, the most impactful experiences that I'll be talking about next slide um, typically happened after somebody had experienced a florid psychotic episode. Um, so this is kind of getting into what seems to be different about these experiences. Some people described what I would consider sort of an increase of attentional control. So typically, somebody with psychosis, their mind is all over the place. It's fragmented. They can't focus on anything, and it's confusing and frightening. But participants during the effects of psychedelics felt like they could control their thoughts. In the words of one participant, you don't feel lost. You just feel very connected to yourself. It's like you've got a telescope, and you can just see where you want to look. Whatever you want to focus on, it's there. There's nothing jumping in and cutting you off from that experience. Another thing that I thought was interesting that people mentioned that I wasn't expected is there's such a strong element of demoralization and stigma that comes with recovering from a psychotic illness. Are you crazy for life? Can you never trust any of your own experiences again? People described, some people described, you know, kind of being able to see themselves as people again. I thought that was amazing. So this person said um, they recovered a sense of faith in themselves. Um, and they were able to basically see the ways that their psychotic experience had shaped them for the better. 
And that was important to me after my psychotic break because the psychosis was very demoralizing. For me, it felt like it robbed me of my very own agency in the world. It robbed me of a lot of parts of myself that I valued. Again, this quote kind of speaks to that cognitive control aspect. Um, this participant before, he was like, I can't you know, talk to people. They're like, my mind is just all over the place. I'm confused. But then he said when he was on psilocybin, when I was on psychedelics, I could just speak. It was almost like there was no obstruction in front of me. I could just speak freely. I know it just almost like took away a hurdle. So you think about the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, like people not wanting to talk, having no motivation. It's as if maybe their thoughts are so jumbled that it's difficult for them to become motivated and to interact. So obviously, as I said, there were negative experiences. I think it's important that we consider them, but they weren't anything abnormal. People describing doing drugs in a circumstance where they might be interrupted by people who like, <laughs> would not be happy with them being on drugs, such as a parental figure. Um, you know, the effects lasting too long. Oh God, 12 hours, what? You know, I was, I was done at the end. I was just like, this is, this is what they were saying. Um, people were even saying like, I was looking after a friend when I was tripping and I didn't want to like keep looking after them. And that was just a real problem. So I was like, oh, a person with a psychotic disorder on LSD, looking after a person having a difficult trip. What, what is going on here? I don't know. Um, and people did have panic attacks. And these obviously are extremely scary and terrifying. But, you know, it didn't seem to do this person any long term harm. And they had reporting having panic attacks prior. So what about in terms of long term? Are they suddenly, you know, becoming extremely psychotic? As that whole sort of psychotoma mimic kind of understanding implies might happen? I did not see that. Um, keep in mind, these people might be very biased and they're all psychonauts. But within the sample, people seem to describe a sense of insight into their symptoms, having more cognitive control reduction in depression and anxiety symptoms, and a range of behavioral changes. So for example, um, let's see, ever since the second psilocybin trip, it just sort of gave me loads of motivation, a reduction in anxiety. I could actually continue life and function more normally. So if you're sitting there and you know, you're just having voices interrupt you and you know, every time you try to think of doing something, it's interrupted by that. You can see how you're not able to be in the world. You're not able to forge relationships with people and all of that. Apparently, this person, you know, started living life more normally afterwards. Um, and the same with this person who we'll call Zach, too. Um, he was able to keep a consistent schedule, uh, started going to work every day. And, you know, was doing a bunch of things that helped sustain his well-being. He even said that the period of my life, that period of my life was marked by pretty consistent use of LSD and magic mushrooms intermittently. So the most stable period for him using psychedelics regularly. Um, and that's not to say that these experiences are like easy for people and that they're all fun. Um, one participant described his experience as being like cleaning out the trash and that he was realizing how being labeled psychotic, how going through sort of the hospitalization process and then trying to integrate, integrate back into society had damaged his identity. He was able to see that and kind of address it. And that for him was kind of considered cleaning out the garbage. Um, so magic mushrooms have been difficult, but every time that I've come out of the magic mushroom state, I felt less psychotic, I felt less unhinged, I felt less at risk myself. myself. 
Um, I think the insight aspect is especially intriguing because people describe during their psychosis being utterly convinced that whatever delusions that they were experiencing were real. It was shaping their whole reality and how whatever they were doing on a daily basis, people would, you know, run around cities looking to fight an interdimensional war or something like that. Like that literally was a participant. And, you know, when you're thinking things like that, you can't interact with the world. But if you have insight into the fact that that's not actually happening, you can still have those thoughts and not like be afraid. So it wasn't necessarily that their delusions or hallucinations were reduced, not for all people. <clears throat> But they described being aware that, oh, this is a phenomenon that my mind is creating. And I think that's radically different than the current sort of treatment approach to psychotic disorders, where it's just like whatever we can do to dampen symptoms is what, or the positive symptoms is what must be done. So I don't know. Um, so perceived negative impact long term. I pressed people about this so hard because I was like, you've got to give me better answers. Like this is not a real side effect. Um, so people did describe, you know, they started using psychedelics and they hung around more people who were also using psychedelics. And then they ended up doing psychedelics together. And then y y you know how it goes, I'm sure. So that, that could be problematic. Um, and for some people it was in that people who use um, cannabis have, um, it, that can increase psychotic symptoms for people. Um, so I asked people also, what was their, what were the similarities uh, with their psychotic experience? In general, people were like, they're really not that similar, but there were some similarities in that it was a very extreme experience. People reported, feeling a lot, lot of moments of synchronicities where suddenly they would make connections and stuff like that with both psychedelics and psychosis. They seem to have a different flavor in both states, but that tendency to just jump to a conclusion was there with both. And the experience was also described as people being more aware than normal, even maybe a sense that sort of some sort of filter of experience was reduced. But in general, people said that cannabis was the drug for them most like psychosis. I don't think that's a typical response. I think that's probably something to do with people who have um, a psychotic-like brain and how they react to cannabis. Because it's not like that for most people, I don't think. Um, so, but they were more focused on the differences. And basically, psychosis was described as this sense of where you were completely uncertain and everything was chaotic. But yet, somehow it would click, and then everything is certain, and you have to follow this whole delusional sort of narrative. And there was a lack of control. It felt like people were being subjected to this experience. For psychedelics, you know, there was a sense of novelty, but there was also a malleability to the experience. So people described being almost able to choose their affect, you know just being able to have a positive experience or a negative experience and to change their mind. So that's quite different as well, I think. Um, so with these results, you know, take everything with a huge heap or a bucket of salt. Uh, people love microdosing. People love talking about that. People write books about it. Um, but yet the evidence hasn't really shown that that's effective. So people might just be seeing you know, the hype and kind of projecting that onto their experiences. Uh, but I think there's a huge risk of not studying psychedelics and psychosis because we might not be um, providing treatments to people. Uh, so like tobacco use, you know, we're excluding people who have histories of psychosis or even family histories. We're not providing accurate harm reduction um, information. And obviously still there is use occurring in this population. And it seems almost to me that we have created psychosis as being a scapegoat for the side effects of psychedelics. We're not really willing to engage in a real conversation about what could go wrong. You know, there aren't really cases of people 
developing schizophrenia reported in these clinical trials. But there are cases of people having suicidal ideation, a manic-like tendencies. Should we actually kind of focus on the real risk? Are we ready to have that conversation about what could actually go wrong and stop just using the most stigmatized mental health condition out there as a target? I think so. I think what we ultimately need to do is we need to have um, psychedelics administered to people within a clinical trial. This needs to be done very, very cautiously. But to find out what's actually going on, this is ultimately what's going to need to be done. And other drugs that can increase psychotic symptoms, such as THC, have even been used in an fMRI in people with psychotic disorder. So there's no reason to think that psychedelics would be especially bad for these people in comparison to other things that have already been done. But with all this being said, just because I said that, you know, people might not be harmed, don't go out there and be like, oh, I heard that my friend, you know, had a psychotic episode. Let's give him magic mushrooms. It'll help him. No, 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 no. Um, more research is needed.